What's up you guys, Shri Kanasa here. So as many of you know, a lot of dropshippers have been targeting the top 5 countries, specifically the United States of America, because the United States of America is one of the biggest consumer economies in the world. And that goes to explain why a lot of these Shopify gurus on YouTube or in Facebook groups like to suggest that you should definitely target top five countries, including the United States mostly, just because of the demand there is. But sometimes these people, including myself, forget that there are other untapped markets out there which not a lot of people drop ship to. And just because of this, those untapped markets are literally open fields of profits just laying there. I mean, just imagine a gold mine full of gold which no one has found yet. Because they don't know where the entrance is. And that is exactly what the situation is when it comes to these untapped markets. So by the end of this video, not only are you going to know exactly what these untapped markets are, but exactly the full strategy that you can use to open a brand new Shopify store to market in those countries and those untapped markets to make all of your dreams come true. And it is super clear that not many people are talking about these untapped markets as you can see, I've been seeing a lot of comments on Facebook of people asking which country they should target and a lot of people suggesting that they target worldwide excluding a few countries. But in reality, instead of targeting worldwide or just top five countries, why not choose one specific country to target to and base your entire store around that country. So in this sense, it is sort of a one product store, but instead of it being a one product store, it is a one country store, meaning you're only gonna be targeting one specific country and have your store revolve around that. But without wasting any more time, let's jump right inside my computer. Untapped markets and your guide to drop shipping internationally with profits. So the first thing I want to actually talk about is why do you even want to consider drop shipping in these other markets or these other countries? What is so special about them that you would go ahead and put in a little bit extra work, sometimes even a bit more than a little, to make a brand new store that revolves around these countries? And this image right here explains everything and every reason there is out there as to why you should do this. Over the past few years, since 2012, the economy in the United States has been booming for online retail sales. As you can see, there has been a vertical growth in the amount of retail sales that are made online from 2012. And although the year-on-year -year growth has been slightly decreasing, the overall trend is positive and it is going up and there is no sign that it is going to come back down or stabilize. This just means that more and more people are turning online to sell in the United States. There are more drop shippers along with other real brands coming out in the United States and targeting only the United States to make a majority of their sales. So in simple language, this just means that, okay, you're just dealing with a lot more saturation, a lot more competition in the United States. And I have yet to find somebody who gets excited over competing with other competitors on a daily basis. Because let's face it, it is not an easy thing to do because that means you have to come up with all of these strategies to deal with it and all of these marketing plans. And there's just a lot of sleep lost over this. I don't know about you guys, but I personally love to sleep. And instead of losing sleep over something so trivial, why not just choose another market entirely, which people don't even know about to drop ship to. So again, just to recap what I just said, competition to sell in the US is increasing, not just vertically, but nowadays exponentially. It is just going through the roof. As you can see on the screen, the trend for dropshipping has been increasing significantly. And this is mostly revolving around the United States, as I mentioned, because people all over the world believe that the US is one of the top countries to market to. And that is why saturation is increasing so quickly in the United States. So in a case like this, just diversifying the market meaning using Facebook ads along with Google ads and Pinterest ads, maybe even Snapchat ads is not enough. You're going to have to think outside the box and do something a bit different. And this is where marketing simply to another country comes into play. So there's a very simple strategy as to how this is all done. I've personally started developing stores which revolve around these other markets and I'm already seeing a high ROAS coming in from these other markets 
I have a lot of friends that I know online which have used this strategy in the past as well and they've been able to scale profitably for months and months not just a few weeks through the roof to six figures even seven figures so this strategy has been used not only by me but my peers as well and the strategy goes like this the first step is to simply choose a specific product doing well in the United States or look on Amazon or eBay for a specific region and find a product which you can make a store around for a different market. So before continuing on with the strategy, one simple step which I did not include in the layout here is to smash that like button down below. All right, now that you've smashed that like button down below, you've already implemented about 20% of this strategy. But going back to this specific layout, there are several countries which are currently untapped and these untapped markets or untapped countries are shown on this worldatlas.com article so this chart right here just shows you the countries that are currently shopping the most and the countries with the most average e-commerce revenue per online shopper this is not in total but per online shopper the united states on average per online shopper has about $1,800 in sales. And this is followed by the United Kingdom. But as you guys can see, third country on this list is actually Sweden followed by France. These two countries are currently the top two untapped markets out there in the world. I cannot emphasize what kind of ROAS I've seen myself along with a lot of my other peers get from just creating a store that revolves around the specific language and a specific product which is sold solely in Sweden or solely in France or even Germany as Germany is the fifth on our list. Sweden has an average e-commerce revenue per online shopper of about $1,400 followed by French, which is roughly around $1,200. These are very big numbers when it comes to online shopping per person. And that goes to show you that there is a, a very high demand for these countries. A lot of people in these countries don't speak English. People in Sweden speak Swedish and people in France speak French. And a quick search on Google as to how many people in Sweden actually speak English, we see that with roughly 10 million people in Sweden, almost all speak Swedish. Swedish is the official language of Sweden. So what this is translating to is that you have an untapped open market where you can simply follow this strategy and the first step is to find a specific product doing well in the United States or look for a product doing well in Amazon Sweden website. I'm going to be going over exactly how to find these specific products very soon. But the second step is to choose a specific country from the list. In this example, we're going to go ahead and choose Sweden. But as you can see, out of these 10 countries, you have other specific markets that you can target to. You can choose from Germany, Japan, Spain, China, Russia, Brazil. In many cases, I would avoid countries like China, Russia, and Brazil just because of the chargeback rates. But you still have these top seven countries that you can target from excluding the United States and the UK. As we just saw, many people speak Swedish and this is the third step on our list, which is to craft one single Shopify store solely in the language spoken by the majority in that country. This translates to starting a Shopify store that relates around this official Sweden language, which is Swedish. Now, of course, I know this is going to be hard, especially for people who don't speak Swedish, but this is where your mighty old friend Google Translate comes into hand. You will have to Google Translate a lot of things, maybe ask some of your Swedish friends how to translate a specific English sentence into Swedish, but trust me, in the end, the ROAS will be unmeasurable because this is an untapped market. But let's go ahead and go over to Amazon for Sweden and see what kind of products come into hand. So right now we're on the Swedish website for Amazon and these are currently all of the products getting sold on Amazon. When it comes to product research for other countries, what I like to do is often look at the amount of reviews a product has. In unsaturated countries, the amount of products with reviews is going to be often very, very low. As you can see, most of these products do not even have reviews, but those products that you do have reviews, all you have to do is just click on the specific product and try to scroll through and see if you can find these other products that are currently sponsored and have reviews which you can list on your Shopify store. As you can see, all of these products did pop up with reviews and it would take a little bit of thinking as you choose a specific product which may do well in the Swedish market. Again, it will require a little bit of research from you to see what is selling well in Sweden. One other strategy that I like to use and I mentioned in the slides is you want to choose a product that is doing well in the United States 
and frame it around the Swedish language and sell it in Sweden. In my own experience, what I've found is if a product is really selling well as fire in the United States, or in other countries, it will often do well in these other unchapped countries and markets. So again, the third step for you will be to craft the store solely in the language of this country. And in addition to that, you will have to create ads based on the language in that country. And that is our fourth step. So you can hire someone who knows Swedish to do this for you or again, you can trust Google Translate to do this for you and have it done by yourself. If you're hiring someone to do a video ad for a product, you will have to supply them the specific annotations which are in Swedish, in this case, to have that done for you. And the fifth and final strategy will be to rinse and repeat because for any untapped market, a lot of testing is required because just something that is selling well in the United States may not always sell well in Sweden or these other countries. But this is the general strategy as to how you can continuously market to these other untapped countries and make not only six figures but up to seven figures just because there's literally nobody selling in that country. It will require that you do research on Amazon or eBay or, or even follow one of my other tutorials on product research to find a product doing well in the United States or any other countries and then translate the language to Swedish or any other country that you choose to sell in. This will require that your entire store has every single page in that specific language for that specific country. Yes, I know hard work, but this hard work will bring about a lot of profits if you do it right. But if you have found any type of value in this video, make sure to just destroy that YouTube like button to please the YouTube gods. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you're getting value bombs just like these ones. But I'll see you guys next time.